Conquest, lament, conquest, lament, conquest, lament. Very good, very good, my young apprentice. Now, go home and watch those episodes of Star Trek I gave you and Tommy Wiseau's The Room. Go, in next week's lessons, you shall be a great actor. Huzzah! Ha, 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 ha. And my friend, how are you doing today? A lot better before you did that. Ah. Uh, it's time for the next review. Ah, uh, so, yes, yeah. a review, a great chance to be actors away with us! Why does he have to do it in my house? So, imagine there's a game where you could pit fighters from across time and space against each other. I'm aware you want to see Gandhi fighting Abraham Lincoln, but the time machine is still broken. No, 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 I have a game set up in your living room. Let me show you. Anything to get us out of this incredibly bad shot. Oh, that reminds me! Ah! This is the ultimate showdown A ultimate destiny Could pass bad guys and explosions As far as the eye can see And only one will survive I wonder who it will be This is the ultimate showdown A ultimate destiny So, this is Heroescape, the battle of all time. Isn't it awesome? Wow, when you said that you had already set it up, you weren't kidding. Yeah, I had to shoot the opening shots. Don't worry, you were asleep. Wait, if I was... How did you get in my house? Don't ask questions you don't want to know the answers to. So I noticed there are point values on the cards, and I'm estimating that having balanced armies should enable us to have about 400 points apiece. So... I'll take a turn picking one of these cards, and then you can take a turn. Why are there no wizards? Why are there no wizards in this game? What is going on? What is wrong with this game? Why doesn't it have wizards? Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down, man. Here. Draft a dragon. Their fire breath is kind of like having magic. And I'll get the crowd from the guy agents. Okay. In addition to Mimring, I'm going to select the Marrow Warriors. My choice will be Evan Scarcarver. Alright, I guess that leaves me with the Zedian Guards then. Then I'll choose Raylan the Kyrie Warrior. And lastly, Grimnak, the orc riding a dinosaur. I guess my last choice will be the Airborne Elite. Why didn't they appear? Because they airdrop in during the middle of battle. That's amazing! Alright, now we need to determine who goes first. And I assume that the way we determine that is by rolling that die. Now why would you assume that? Because it's the most logical thing. I mean, what, are we gonna go by whose ears are pointiest? Yeah, that'd be pretty wacky. Anyway, so I'll roll. Alright. And a 16 beats my 11. Alright, let's go. Well, since it's my turn, my whole team gets to go, right? No. Actually, you'll take these shield things, and you will place them on your individual cards. Then, depending on which turn you're taking, you reveal that particular number, be it turn 1, 2, or 3. But you have four little shields. Yeah, the X1 is a decoy. Oh, okay. For my first turn, I'll move my Krav Maga agents. And because I can move and shoot in one turn, I'm going to shoot all of my guns at your Grimnak. Now before we move on, we need to explain the combat mechanics of the game. They're really straightforward. You assemble a pool of red dice for the attacker. They have three skulls on them, and three blank spaces. You then assemble a pool of defense for the defender. They have four blank spaces on them and two shields. Red and blue, attack and defense. Dice, 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 dice. If your skulls exceed your opponent's shields, you deal that much damage to them. If your numbers are equal or less than their shields, nothing happens. Dice. Get a hold of yourself, man! Sorry, fell off the wagon. Back to the game. 
Okay, and it looks like after all that gunfire, he's going to take one wound. It's upsetting, but true. Okay, well you just shot Grimnak, and now he's upset. And it's his turn. So he's going to go one, two, three, four. And he's going to use his chomp ability on that guy. Chomp? What does that do? Oh, he eats his face. What? Bye-bye! <laughs> Wait a second, Grimnak stepped on a tile. What is that? Oh, that's a glyph. Hang on a second. Oh, the glyph of Brandar. That's scenario specific. According to the book, Grimnak gets to take another turn. What? Well, since it's Ray Lynn's turn, and she has flying, I can fly up here and get this glyph. I wonder what it does. It's a massive curse. Wow. Today's just not your day, is it? Some characters have assisting abilities. For example, my Zedian guards. As long as they're attacking the same character, each subsequent attack in a single round gets a plus one bonus. So for example, when they move forward and attack your Avar Scar Carver, they will first roll two dice for the attack. Mm -hmm. Then the second one will roll three dice for his attack. Wait a minute. If I'm here and you're there, Whose hand is that? With this expansion, some characters gained abilities for when you reveal the decoy marker, such as Evan Scarcarver's Frost Rage ability. It gives him an additional uh, plus one die on attack and defense for each one of the three wounds he's received so far. And since he has two attacks, he's awesome! Now since you've managed to surround my dragon with all of your dudes, if you were to move away like so, you would immediately get to roll a single red die for every one of your characters who had been engaged with him. Meaning, in this case, five dice. Everyone that came up a skull would result in an immediate wound to my dragon that he could not roll defense against. Wait a second. How in the world did we get here? I don't know. Now let's talk about elevations. When traveling from one elevation to another, you have to keep in mind that in order to go up, you have to go through those spaces. For example, traveling from here to here takes one, two points of movement because you're going one up. Similarly, going from here to here takes one, two points of movement. Here to here is again one, two points of movement. Traveling from here to here takes one, two, three points of movement because it's only two spaces up and then the space you're moving to. Traveling from here to here would take four points of movement because one, two, three, four. So on. Now, if the elevation is higher than your character is tall, for example, say you're over here and you're trying to get up there, you cannot move up to it even if your movement allows you to because you cannot jump that high. For example, in his case, he has a height of four, as demonstrated by his character card right there. So he would not be able to move from here directly to this glyph. However, since he's starting out here, he can go one, two, three, four, and then move on to the glyph, which happens to be the glyph of Airland, summoning. Huh, I wonder what that does. I'm a dragon. You get a dragon? If during the course of your turn you happen to move into water like so, your movement for that unit immediately ends. All the other units in the squad can still continue their full movement, but that unit specifically doesn't get it anymore. When moving out of water, you have to count the first space as being up higher than the water, of course, because water would otherwise overflow everywhere. So it takes one, two movement to move out of water. But I'm just going to leave my guy in the water. Why are you moving him into water? Oh, reasons. Now, when shooting at an enemy who's slightly obscured, you actually get down behind the model and check from their line of sight. As long as you can strike one of the unit's vitals, then you can shoot him. In this example, oh yeah, I can totally shoot that guy. Heh <laughs> heh. Got him. Well, since you've been ignoring my singular marrow warrior this whole time, I'm going to devote all of my actions to him this turn. What will that do? Well, every time his action comes up, I get to roll a 20-sided die. If I roll a 10 or higher for each of my Marrow Warriors in the water, 
I get an extra Marrow Warrior that appears. Thus, devoting all of my turns to Marrow Warriors results in their entire unit being rebuilt. My paratroopers have a special power that lets them air drop in. Since I just rolled a 15, they get to drop down anywhere on the battlefield as long as they're not next to anyone. Just like that. And since it's their turn now, they're going to throw grenades at Grimnak. Not my orc on a dinosaur! Haha! -ha. Holy crap! They just completely annihilated my orc on a dinosaur! So, your paratroopers think they're so awesome? Well, Mimring is going to swoop in and gain dark vengeance for you destroying my orc on a dinosaur. He's using his Fireline special attack to shoot them all with flames! Holy crap! Ha 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 ha! And all of my guys target your Valkyrie with all of their guns, completely and totally annihilating her and killing her dead. Wow. That was actually pretty fun, despite the fact that I pretty much won epically and you failed miserably. And it happens sometimes. Yeah, it does. But yeah, only took about 20 minutes and um, it was pretty sweet. So, how long did it take to set up the whole board? Alright, this shouldn't take too long. What does this have to do with acting? Acting? Oh no, you're going to help me set this up, then I'll go to your lesson. Oh. This is the ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny. Good guys, bad guys, and explosions. As far as the eye can see, and only one will survive. I wonder who it will be. Let me get my dark menacing face on.